Today we are talking about Set. I've basically not played any other guard in the past few days until my very last game yesterday because I really wanted to get down with these guards mechanics, with everything surrounding his kit. I wanted to test various different items so I can make sure to give you good information here because this one is not an easy one to crack. I think I have it mostly down as far as we can find it at the moment. I'm expecting some changes to the guard in the near future, so some of this may need an update sooner or later. That will happen when it needs to happen, but for now let's talk about Set in his current state and how to play him. So this is a Set guide. Set is very interesting in the sense that he is technically a hybrid guard, but he's not an AA guard, not a basic attack focus or basic attack build guard by any stretch of what we have seen being successful so far. And that is due to the nature of his kit and various parts of it, and we'll get into that first. After that, we'll also talk about leveling order, we'll talk about combos, we'll talk about specific tips for set, because there are a lot of specific things with him. We'll talk a bit about his role in general and his position where you play him, and of course we'll talk about his itemization. Let's begin with his passive. His passive is relentless, and every time he damages an enemy, the passive gets a stack, up to 10 stacks, unless you're in the ultimate, then it's uncapped. And each stack gives you 2.5% attack speed, so normally a maximum of 25%. A special interaction with Horus here is that when hitting a Horus, you get twice the stacks for everything. In some situations, the passive is very easy to stack. For example, if you're in a minion wave and you use your 3, every tick of the 3 on every single minion will proc it and you will almost instantly be at max stacks. In other situations, when you're fighting 1v1 and you're starting from zero stacks, it can take a little bit longer, especially if your 3 is down. That said, even your spawns can stack it, so it's not super hard to stack. Item effects will not stack it at all, that includes the Crusher, that includes Mystical Mail, Height of the Nemean Lion and Thorns. His first ability is Skewer, a line ability that deals 230 damage plus 80% scaling with a 7 second cooldown and slows enemies hit for 25% for 3 seconds. It goes through targets, so it's a very good clear overall, and it can also be amplified if you have spawns active, because these spawns will also dash to wherever on the targeter you point at. So while the ability itself goes in a line, you can move your targeter closer to your character and the spawns will dash closer towards you. So ideally you want to aim the spawns or aim your targeter at an enemy that you want to hit with the spawns as well as the skewer. His second ability is exactly those spawns. The ability is called Spawn of Set. He conjures a spawn of himself made of sand, and this spawn can hit nearby enemies with a 12 feet range, so very, very close, because the spawns cannot move on their own. It deals 20 base damage plus 25% scaling, which does not increase when leveling it, and on the initial rank, they have a duration of 8 seconds with a 13 second cooldown. It also costs 30 mana to spawn a spawn, which in my opinion is way too much. Zed has two charges of this ability, so you can have two spawns out immediately if you want to, though I wouldn't recommend spamming them at any point. Leveling this ability gives it a longer duration and a slightly shorter cooldown. The third ability is Sandstorm. Sandstorm is an AoE ability that deals damage every 0.4 seconds for 6 seconds, a relatively low tick in damage. The base damage here is 8 to 24 with 7% scaling. Enemies that are in this area have their vision obscured by the sands, so it's a slight blind. The damage that Set takes while under this effect, the physical damage specifically, is reduced by 15%. And the ability also allows him to teleport to one of his spawns or blink there immediately by targeting a spawn and using the ability. The range here is 65 feet. This can be used at any point of the sandstorm duration. So you can use it right at the start and just immediately teleport to an enemy and activate the sandstorm that way. Or you can use the sandstorm first and fight an enemy and then teleport to a spawn at a later point or even put down a spawn and teleport to that one. The cooldown of the ability only starts once the ability either runs out or you have teleported. So if you teleport immediately, the cooldown will be shorter. The cooldown is 16 seconds and the mana cost scales up from 50 to 70. Set's ultimate is Kingslayer. It increases his movement speed by 25% for 12 seconds. And when he damages an enemy, 
they gain a mark. And after four mark, the mark explodes, giving him an additional stack of his ability to the spawn of set. If he has full stacks of spawn of set already, then the spawn will just be spawned immediately somewhere near set instead. You should spawn them yourself, especially if you use Hydra's Lament and also to position them properly. Also, when the mark explodes, the targets take a little bit of damage, 25 to 85 base plus 25% scaling, and set is healed for a little bit, 30 to 90 base with 20% extra scaling. What's interesting here is that this ability can also be procced on multiple guards at once. It does only work on guards, but if multiple guards are close to you and you're using your three, then you can easily get multiple procs of this very, very quickly and get even more spawns very, very quickly. The mana cost here is 80 to 100 with a 90 second cooldown. When it comes to leveling order, the first ability that you most definitely want to level is the one. The one does the most damage, the most clear, it's just the core ability and it's safe on top of that. And after that, you can already get in a long discussion over what is the best thing to level. Intuitively, most people will level the three and I think in many situations that is the best choice. An extra rank of the three gives you an additional 20 damage over two seconds if you stick to an enemy, which means an extra total of 60 damage for the six second duration. Now the thing is, especially in early game, you're not necessarily going to stick to an enemy for that long. So the question is if it's always super beneficial and the damage increase here is not super, super high either. The increased mana cost that comes with this is also a downside because set uses a lot of mana already and you don't necessarily want to increase that more than you have to. The other ability that you can prioritize at this point is the two. A point in the two will give you an extra second duration on your spawns and it will also decrease the cooldown by 0.5 seconds, but it also goes down every second rank, so rank 3 is minus 1 second. That means you can use the spawns more often for more utility, more escape potential, more damage potential in some situations, and obviously in the ult they also last longer, so you have that heavier hitting ult that way. It's an option, I'm just saying <laughs> it's possible, though in many situations it feels nice such a level of 3, at least initially. You can also maximize the ultimate. That gives you plus 15 damage and healing per rank per proc of the ult and it can proc multiple times. I think most of the time it's not exactly worth leveling the ult, but at the same time having that extra ult healing can feel very, very nice. So the decision is really up to you. The only thing that is definitely always the same thing is leveling the one. In most situations, you're probably gonna end up either mixing the three afterwards or going for the two if you really want that duration increase. It also depends on how the game is going, how much you're focusing on cooldown reduction and how much extra mana you have. When it comes to his combos, there are some more straightforward ones and some more complex ones. The first one is simply using his one without anything else. Not really a combo, but I think some players underestimate that. It has 230 base damage at highest rank and that's just 60 less than Ulr's one with 10% more scaling. So it's not terrible on its own. And if you don't have mana for anything else, for example, it can still be fine. It can still be fine to pick off a target, to slow down a target instead of waiting for your two to come up. So it can be used on its own. The better combo in most situations is using the two and the one together, because that definitely heavily ramps up the base damage and scaling of the ability. And you want to make sure to hit both of them if you can. But even if you miss one, you still have the benefit of the other and the slow still goes through. Now a combo that many new players may be tempted to do initially is 2-2-1. Two, two, Just put down two spawns and then try to hit an enemy. I would not recommend that in most situations. There are exceptions here, of course. But the problem with this is that you're basically sacrificing your entire escape potential for only 40% bonus damage as the second spawn will get this damage decrease and other following spawns after that do too. So most of the time you just want to use one spawn, use the damage with that and keep your second spawn for whenever you need it for something else. If you're going super aggressive and you're killing the last enemy that obviously doesn't make as much of a difference. For your escape, the most simple way to do that is to simply drop a 2 somewhere and then use the 3 immediately after. Can't go quicker than that because you don't have to double activate the 3, just have to make sure that your targeter is still on the spawn, which can sometimes not be as easy as it sounds, especially if you're moving around a little bit. Also, you can kind of semi-commit to an enemy if you keep your 3 as an escape. 
if you, for example, gank an enemy from the back or you slow them down enough to catch up to them, then you can use your three, but keep one minion and eventually use that to get out by placing it further back. Then, on the other hand, you can also full commit by using a three as an engage, in which case you would use the two into the three and then use the one, for example, at close range when you're already committed on the target and follow up with everything else. At that point, you, for example, could also even just use two spawns immediately because you're not going to use the three as an escape before the cooldown of at least one of your spawns is up anyways. That said, your one would come off cooldown before the spawn, so you could keep the second spawn just to use your one with a spawn again and get more damage out of it that way. Up to you, depends on where you position as well. For the ultimate, the most obvious combo is using your three in any way, either using the ultimate first and teleporting in with a three if you don't want your escape, or just running into the enemy with your ultimate and using your three. Whichever way, just make sure to have the three up when you have the ult so you can get your procs much more quickly and therefore get a lot more set spawns that way, allowing you to survive better as well and giving you more extra damage. Committing onto the ult without the three usually has way less successful results. In either case, keep placing spawns during your ultimate and then use your one if you have a few spawns up. Don't use it too early unless you think it's going to be off cooldown because you're going to hit the enemy with more spawns if you wait a little bit longer. But not too long because the cooldown is very short, so there's no harm in using it multiple times either. Now for some tips for set. Don't spam the two. Just saying it again, it's very important and you're going to burn too much mana doing it as well. Ult early enough to utilize the mark. I know for myself that I often have this feeling of using the ultimate later for safety purposes, kind of like you would do with a Kali, because hey, it has a heal, it would make sense, right? Or maybe like a Bakasura ult, which you can often use to, to get out as well. That's not the case for Set. The ult only gives him a little bit of movement speed. It's much better to use it early in the fight and maybe waste it a few times and just realize you're not going to get a kill out of it, than using it too late and not really being able to get enough procs in time and just dying to it. Keep in mind that the ult can however be used as an escape. You can pop the ult just to run faster and sometimes that is what will get you out. Also remember, the ult only stacks on guards, so using it in a wave doesn't really do much outside of the fact that you get more free stacks with a 3 if it's up as well and that unlocks your attack speed so you can get a lot more attack speed. But Primarily, the benefit should be trying to get at least two guards with your three during the ultimate to get many, many procs and many spawns and heals. The passive is best utilized by stacking it before a fight. So for example, uh, you could stack it on a minion camp and then teleport over to an enemy in mid-wave, or you could use it by stacking the three in a wave and then going in on the enemy right after, and you'll have that extra attack speed. But sometimes the extra attack speed is not super important either. Keep in mind that the three will cleanse slows. Unfortunately, in a previous build, it was a little bit glitched. I'm not quite sure if that's fixed at this point, but this is something you can definitely utilize to get into safety and to counter certain guards as well. And when it works properly, it should be very effective in certain situations. Position yourself behind your sand clone for easy aims. This is especially important with camp clearing because the difference between hitting the one and a two on a camp and just hitting one of them is actually huge and will sometimes require you quite a few basic attacks to make up for. So stand behind the clone when you use it or throw the clone in front of you and use it and you will be guaranteed to hit it very easily. Engage if you hit your enemy with the one, so you had a lot of burst on them already and the slow and everything, or use the one after you engaged and that way guarantee the hit of the one. If you miss your one and you engage, you're usually at a disadvantage because your main damaging ability is on cooldown and the rest of his kit itself doesn't really do that much damage. Sure, the basics do, but still in a trade you will often be on the losing side without the one. Using the three on a minion during the one, so while the minion dashes somewhere, will unfortunately not get you to the end of the range. You will instead just stop the minion at the point where you're teleporting, so you can't use this to increase your range, even though it would have been such a cool play interaction if that was possible. Minions don't proc anything outside of sets passive. So item effects like Heartseeker, Crusher, or anything alike will not proc off them. And that brings us to the role discussion. Now, I think Set isn't a bad jungler. Some people think that he seems to be very, very bad in jungle because he doesn't have the hard CC for setup. I do not agree. 
Yet at the same time, I absolutely have to acknowledge his benefits of being played in a lane. He has a much easier time keeping his passive fully stacked, he has a lot of lane pressure with his spawns and with his one, and he also has the physical protection against certain targets, so I don't think it's absurd to play set anywhere outside of the jungle. I think he could possibly be a mid laner with high burst, he could be a bruiser style solo laner with high CDR, the problem there is the lack of sustain in early stages, and maybe even if you want to go all crazy an ADC. So that's something that's also worth keeping in mind for the item discussion here because certain builds may work better in certain roles, in certain situations. And that brings us to the items and there's a lot to talk about here. Now I'm gonna go about this mostly from a jungle perspective but also keep other roles in mind. Also, if you follow my community tab, then you may know that I wasn't happy with the first attempt of this and I kind of had to re-record it all. Unfortunately, I had to do it at a time where I couldn't be as loud, so if the audio is a bit inconsistent, I'm sorry about that, but in return, you will have the most updated information regarding the items that you can have and a bit more in-depth than it originally was. So we're gonna look at every single item that I think Seth can make use of to some degree and talk about how he can do that and how they can fit together. Every build starts with a blessing and that's no different for Set. If you're playing him in jungle, you want Assassin's Blessing. If you're playing him in solo, you probably want Warrior's Blessing to have a little, a little bit of sustain. If you're playing him in any other role, you probably want Mage's Blessing or outside of Conquest, Attacker's Blessing. I wouldn't go Hunter's Blessing as that really isn't that beneficial for him. In terms of boots, there are two options that I would say are reasonable at least. One is Warrior Tower if you just want a lot of early game burst. That is completely understandable and would probably be the preferred choice by most. But the other one is Teleria Boots. Teleria Boots is very strong A because Set needs a lot of mobility and needs to get around fights very quickly and this helps with it because he only has one mobility ability as such and it can also help with sticking to enemies without haste and katana. And on the other hand it gives you MP5 which is very nice because Set uses a lot of mana in early game. In later stage it's not as important for him but this can kind of bridge the gap. I've used both items to decent success, so I wouldn't say one is better than the other here, and it's really a matter of preference mostly. His first damage item is usually down to one of three choices. The first one that's very straightforward is Jordan's Wrath. This simply comes with a lot of ability damage through power and penetration, as well as a cooldown reduction, and it's the best early cooldown reduction item because it's 20%, which I think is very, very good for Set because he really needs this spammability of his abilities and the extra mana obviously helps too. The other option, if you're looking for more aggression and cooldown reduction is not as valued by you and you're also looking to go a little bit more hybrid, is the Crusher. I would say these options are about equal and it's really more a matter of playstyle, though lately I have been going the Crusher more as it allows for some more flexibility in certain path, but for specific builds I would most certainly go Jones over Crusher. The third option is Transcendence. Now, while Transcendence is very nice for him, I only would really think about it in specific situations now. Once you learn how to handle his mana a little bit better, which honestly takes some practice, it's not necessarily the best option most of the time, as it slows down your power curve a lot and stacking it is just annoying. That is very different if you're playing him in solo or in mid lane or something, then I would definitely build Transcendence. Another reason to build Transcendence is if you're opting into a more basic attack focus build later on. If you're, for example, considering Haste and Katana, then Transcendence can offset a little bit of the stat loss that you can get from that, but then you're also building more for late game. So it's not a horrible choice and you can still consider in a later slot after Jones Wrath, for example. I personally didn't usually prefer it over the other options. All of these items can also be built at later points, but there are also other damaging items that I wouldn't recommend building in the first slot that are still very, very good for him. One of them is Hydra's Lament. Hydra's Lament is simply very good because he can proc it so many times. Every time you use your two, you get a stack of Hydra's Lament. Every time you use your one, you get one. Every time you use your three, you get one. And in your ultimate, you can spam the two and you can constantly get your procs through that as well. So a lot of benefit in this ability here. On that note, I'd like to also go back to the Crusher briefly, which doesn't quite have the same benefit in terms of direct interactions. It is offset by the fact that Crusher is just an excellent DPS item and damage items anyways. But Crusher does not get procced by the minion of the 1, it does not get procced by the 2, but in return it gets procced by every target you hit with a 3 at all, 
and it gets procced with every single proc of the ultimate. So every four hits, every time you fill up the mark, you get a crusher proc along with it, which can be very nice. The next item for damage that's also more of a bruiser option at the same time is Blackthorn Hammer. Even after its nerfs, it's very strong, especially for a character like Set, who benefits a lot from being a little bit more tanky, which we'll get to in a moment, and also from having power and CDR. This is a very good item. When the situation requires it, Broil Speedstick is obviously very good as well, because it has the anti-heal and still has good damaging stats. Heartseeker is an item that you can consider if you really want to maximize the burst combo with his one. I gotta say most of the time I felt like it was a bit underwhelming compared to Hydra's because you still stack it through basic attacks and you don't want to constantly run into the jungle or something just to get the stacks for Heartseeker back up. Maybe Heartseeker is a bit more of a reasonable option if you're playing him in lane already then it makes a little bit more sense but I would usually prefer other options that give him more damage or more cooldown reduction. And that brings us to the bruiser items. Now the interesting thing with Set is, as much as he has nice scalings, he benefits a lot from surviving longer. If he survives longer, then he will be able to get more procs of his ultimate off. He will also be able to just stick to enemies longer in the three without being threatened by any damage coming towards him, and that gives him more passive stacks in return as well. He will also be able to use his one more often due to the fact that the cooldown is relatively short. If you live longer in a fight, you can use it more often. So there's a lot of benefit in going for some survivability. How much is up to you. I would always keep in mind that some damage is pretty much necessary on set because otherwise him surviving doesn't matter much. He doesn't have much CC or anything, so he needs some damage to really be relevant. A full tank set will probably not really work. So the first bruiser option here is Masamune. Masamune I think is excellent for his ultimate, as not only does it come with a decent damage and mobility, but the passive allows you to have more protections when more enemies are around you, and when more enemies are around you then you can also proc your ultimate more often with your three, so it kind of has a very nice synergy here. You are tankier, but you also heal more as long as enemies cluster around you or you go in the middle of enemies. If you're tanky enough, then this is a great item. The next one is Frostbound Hammer. I know some people really like this and I think it's not terrible on set. It gives him survivability and it gives him a little bit of a slow while not being quite hasten katana but he doesn't really need hasten katana in my opinion most of the time as he has so much mobility already and you have so many movement items that he benefits from greatly. So Frostbound can be enough. It's often built in combination with Stone Cutting Sword which is also a great hybrid item for him because it has a lot of power and mobility, so it benefits him in either scenario, even if he's just at long range and shooting enemies, but it also comes with a protection reduction at close range. Stone cutting is an item that you can fit in almost any set build somehow at a point sooner or later. Combined with the physical damage reduction and the protection that you get from stone cutting, in a stone cutting frostbound build, he has a very easy time boxing any physical damage dealer with that even though you can build the rest of the build very ability focused. Then there's also Void Shield, which honestly just fulfills a similar purpose to Stone Cutting Sword, with a little more survivability and a little less damage in return. I often prefer that because it's not quite as situational. And then we also have Ancile, which should be mentioned here. He has a very easy time getting to enemies, so he can very easily proc it close to them and counter them that way. So against certain mages, this can be very, very good. In terms of raw survivability, there are two items that I would primarily focus on, and that is Magi's Blessing, because he is so vulnerable to crowd control, and Mantle of Discord, because it allows him to be in a fight for a long time and then get out the moment that Mantle of Discord procs. Both kind of have the same or a similar purpose, I guess. They both help him survive in one way or another, and are the ones that I would build on him even when I go for a damage build most of the time. There are more tanky items that he can benefit from in Soul Lane, for example, as well. This includes Breastplate of Valor, Genji's Guard, and Spirit Rope. They all give you cooldown reduction and some sort of protection, and that's exactly what he benefits from. But again, if you're going into a build like that, I'd recommend still getting some damage somehow. Could be a Void Shield at some point, or Masamune, anything that helps with that aspect too. And then we have the Percentage Penetration. That is, for him, pretty much always tight in Spain. I don't think there's much of a reason to go Executioner, because you can get attack speed from other items if you really want that, and you want to have more damage with the one. The point with Titan's Bane on set in general is that it's not as necessary as on many other guards in my opinion. 
And that is due to the fact that he is so focused on killing squishies because he has this burst ability damage even like in and squishies and he benefits from running down enemies with his ultimate. It's hardly ever a situation where you're really going after the tank unless everyone else is dead and at that point it doesn't really matter anymore. Normally assassins have to go for the front line sometimes because they can't really get to the back line. That's not a problem with Set. Set has a blink in his kit basically. That means he can always position himself very very close to the back line and that's what he should be focusing on. So he's one of the few guards that I think can really get away without percentage penetration in many scenarios. Though obviously not always. If you're facing three heavy frontliners then you have to reconsider. And that brings us to the attack speed items before we talk about late game items. Now attack speed is such a questionable thing with set but I can't really rule it out entirely anymore. This may maybe contradict some things I said earlier in the video a little bit. The problem is that way too many people start building set with haste katana instead of boots or right after boots or whatever. And I think that's a big mistake because it completely misunderstands the character. Especially in early game, set is very ability focused. So if you want an attack speed item in early game, I would highly recommend the crusher because it gives you attack speed, but it also gives you ability damage. And then after that, at later stages, that's when you can consider more movement speed oriented items. It's something that I guess can work. And if you're in a pub stump situation, which I've already seen myself now, have had myself now, then it can be very good. And that's why I can't really say it's bad because if you're pop stumping, then you're best off building an attack speed focused build to some degree. It's just that you could probably win that match anyways, but that way you can win it harder. Attack speed builds are just the most stompy builds in the game. So one choice that I think you should consider is if you really want to go haste katana at a later point, or if you want to go Atalanta's bow, or if you want to have fun and just run both. But the point is that Set has a slow in his kit. He has a lot of mobility, or a lot of quick mobility at least, in a single ability. And he also has increased movement speed in his ultimate. He generally also has some movement items anyways, and therefore has no issue sticking to enemies. So you can easily get away with building Atalanta's bow, getting more beneficial stats, more damaging stats, and skipping Hasten Katana in return. If you prefer the feeling of Hex Katana, that's understandable. Like I said, in that case, I would probably recommend Transcendence to get some more damage behind your basics. Then you also have the option to go into Silver Range Bow, which can get up to 100 stacks with your passive being uncapped during the ultimate, though realistically that won't happen very often at all. The point of it is that you can still get a lot of attack speed, power, penetration, so it's still a very beneficial item overall. And even if you just get a little bit of extra power in the ultimate, that already helps and it's still a cheap item too. So that is one of those items that you could consider at later points of the game too, and even relatively early because it's just a good item overall, but you're sacrificing a lot of your cooldown reduction most of the time. And then there's also a Kaival, which you could technically build because it has that power steal and that can help you in the ultimates, so you get the th three stacks and then you throw out the minions while you have increased power. But at the same time, I don't think it's really that necessary and I think the other attack speed options are better for him. And now let's talk about some late game items. A common one that I've seen quite often is Bloodforge and that's absolutely understandable. It helps with the whole snowball thing during the ultimate. You get a little bit of lifesteal during your basics, you get a lot of power and you also get a shield. Nothing wrong with that. You can also get shift the shield for a little bit more direct survivability and that often helps with getting out when you're low, which is something that really much benefits the fact that he has relatively short cooldowns even on his escape. And if you engage with that, you can kind of use it to get out then. There is another option that I specifically want to point out though, and that is Malice. I think Set is the best guard for Malice in the game right now. Why? Because the base cooldown of your one is 7 seconds. That means if you're heavily building into cooldown reduction, say 30-40%, you can get it down to 4.2 base cooldown, which is already very, very short. And let's say it is somewhere around 4.2 or 5 seconds. Then a single proc of Malice, which can proc every 5 seconds, will take off 2 seconds of your one. 
that means it can take roughly half of the cooldown away. You can basically use it to twice within less than three seconds. So while the enemy is still slowed, you can use your one again. And you probably see where I'm going with this. During the ultimate, this can be absolutely devastating because then you can send your minions out at the enemy once and then you can send them again right after. And you can obviously also use your other abilities more and get out safer and everything. I think this is drastically undervalued so far. I haven't seen anyone actually use it. And I think it's an excellent late game option for him. So I really want to see that in play. Obviously, you still have to be lucky with the crits, but even without that, it's still a nice item because it also has a lot of extra power still. Two items that are absolutely niche are Kin Size and Poison Star. I think with Kins, you can kind of consider it when the enemy team is super, 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 super tanky with a lot of health. But other than that, I don't think it's really beneficial for him because he doesn't have a special attack chain or anything that would help it. And he's just not a god that would spam basics as consistently as Kali or Bakasura. And Poison Star basically having a similar function to Frostborn Hammer, but you have to rely on crits and usually you wouldn't build enough crits for this to work. Items that I would absolutely not recommend on set are Odysseus Bow, because it doesn't actually proc his passive, so it's very lackluster because he's better off just taking down one target or just AoE taking multiple targets. But I don't really see any benefit in this. It doesn't come with any penetration or any power, any of the ability hybrid benefit that other items like Zero Bench have. Soul Eater, because he doesn't really get much out of lifesteal as his minions don't proc it at all. It's still one of those items where it'd be like, yeah, okay, I can see where you will to build for the power and cooldown reduction, but then I would say build Transcendence and then build something like Jordan's Wrath and, and Hydras and it's better for you. Maybe a bit of a preference, maybe more for the lane set, but overall I don't really like it. Gladiator has Shield because it just isn't good. I tried it, I thought it might work with the ultimate because it procs like Crusher on every tick of the ult, but in those situations where your ult procs off, you already have enough sustain and in situations where that's not the case, it just feels very useless. Golden Blade, because his clear is excellent, you don't need that. Runeforged Hammer, because it only procs on his 1, not on his 3, and therefore most of the time it won't be activated. Bumba's Mask, because the last thing he needs is taking more damage or dealing less damage, and there are better ways for him to get mobility. And again, Hunter's Blessing, I don't see any benefit for him in that over, say, Mage's Blessing, especially for early game. Items that I haven't really tested are Berserker Shield. I can't really judge that because I don't know yet. I might be okay, but I don't really see much of a reason to build it. RC, again, it's a lifestyle item, but it's a bit better stat-wise for him than, say, Soul Eater. So it might be okay in some situations, but also something I wouldn't really prioritize or even test. And Toxic Blade, this one I'm really not sure about. It has some stats that kind of could make it compete a little bit with Brawlers if you're really going for that AA style build, but at the end of the day, you probably won't. So there are really three paths that I would prefer for set. Either going for a cooldown ability heavy path, or going for a path that is a little bit more bruiser, a little bit more tanky, or going for a path that implements some attack speed items, but doesn't purely focus on attack speed, but rather hybrid styles. Each one of them has their pros and cons, but which one you prefer is something for you to figure out. You now know which options you have. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this was interesting and insightful and very in-depth this time. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. It really helps me out. And other than that, see you for the next one soon. Duke's love. Out.